Okay, the next thing that I want to go ahead and do is uh, go ahead and cover how to sketch. Well, so in order to learn how to sketch a polynomial, we have to know that this polynomial function will have a x to a certain degree. If this exponent, if this exponent, oops, if this exponent has happens to be an even, it will behave like an x squared, meaning it will look like a parabola like this. Now, if this polynomial happens to have a degree that is odd, it will behave like a cubic. So it'll look like, whoops, it'll look like x to the third, which we know looks like this. Okay, so what I want you to notice is that in even functions, something to an even exponent looks like this, something to an odd exponent looks like this. If they happen to be negative, if they happen to be negative, um, negative, it will be like behaving like negative x squared, which we know is just like reflected across the x axis. Same thing occurs if it is negative x cubed now it looks like this but the endpoints is what we care about so let's go ahead and do a quick little uh, example and let's go ahead and begin so let's say the function that I gave you is gonna be x plus 2 x minus 1 and x plus 1 sure Okay, so just a little random example. What I want to go ahead and do is go ahead and find out what happens at the x-intercepts, also known as the zeros. So here, I'm going to go ahead and take each individual part, each individual part of the factored form, and set it equal to zero. So I got x plus 2 equals zero, x equals negative 2. x minus 1 equals zero x equals 1. x plus 1 equals 0. x equals negative 1. From here, I'm going to go ahead and check the multiplicity, meaning the exponent in front uh, of the parentheses. Sorry. Okay, so I went ahead and outlined it for you because there was nothing there, but it's pretty much telling you the degree is 1. So if the degree, so go ahead and recall this, um, if the degree of the parentheses is uh, odd at these zeros the graph uh, crosses if the degree is even then it touches okay so here we notice they were all one 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 so that means they're all odd that means they all cross cross give me a second guys Sorry about that. Cross. Cross. Sorry. Very sorry. Okay. So real quick. Um, if they would have been even exponents on the... We would have been touching at that axis. So let me go ahead and draw myself a quick little uh, grid. Uh, tiny one, I guess. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my x-axis. Like something like this. And a little y-axis. Like something like this. Okay, so I know where the function touches, but how do I know how it behaves? Well, that's a good point, because this uh, parentheses that I have right here, this parentheses that I have right here, and this one that I have right here, they all have x included. So if I was to distribute everything, at the end of the day, I got x multiplies with x multiplies with x. So x times x times x is, in reality, the power function power function x equals x to the third because it's x being multiplied right here times here times here so x times x times x is x cubed so from above we remember that x to the cubic looks like that so I should have something that is going to negative infinity for my as it approaches uh, neg uh, my negative x's and positive infinity. We'll go ahead and go positive infinity as it goes into the positive 
x's my y's over here okay cool so now let's use our zeros so we have a zero at x equals negative two negative two uh, at negative one and at one okay so at all these points right here the graph touches the x-axis but what happens at the y-axis well that's very important information so to find the y-intercept y-intercept I substitute zeros into x's pretty much evaluate the function as x equals 0 so I go ahead and write my functions with 0 0 plus 2 0 minus 1 and 0 plus 1 so 2 times negative 1 times 1 gives me a negative 2 here I have a y-intercept at the value 0 negative 2 when my x is 0 my y is negative 2 so let's connect the dots so if my graph is right here floating below and at at uh, 2 it crosses it must cross in this form right because it's below so it's gonna go ahead and cross like this now at negative 1 at negative 1 it crosses because the exponent's also odd. So if the graph is floating above, that must mean that if it's going to cross, it's going to cross like this. It's going to go ahead and do some u like that. Now we notice that this right here is our value, and it's going to go ahead and continue going to this y um, intercept. So it has to cross like this. Okay? And last but not least, this value 1. What happens here? Well, same exact thing. It goes ahead and crosses, so it must cross like this, and then it's going to go ahead and go like that to match our um, uh, cubic. So this is how we sketch. So it's a little tedious, but in reality, it's not difficult work. Um, if it would have been negative, if this function would have been negative, let's say like this, had a negative sign, then that just means that this goes ahead and switches. It reflects across the x-axis. Yep, nothing really, really drastic. Okay. Thank you. Bye.